One of the ways I'm going to work through the 216 labs is by trying to see if I could fit everything that I need for all of the labs onto a single breadboard. Now admittedly my breadboard is bigger than yours, you've just got a half size breadboard. But I'm also taking up some space by putting my Arduino right on the breadboard. This is an Arduino Micro and it's got basically all the same capabilities as an Arduino Uno like you're using, except it's smaller. That means the labels are harder to read but it also fits on the breadboard. This ground pin is connected to this ground rail. This plus 5 volt pin is connected to this positive rail, so we've got 5 volts on this side. This ground pin is connected to this ground rail all the way along here. And this 3.3 volt pin over here is connected with this red wire which sneaks around under here and over to this rail. So this rail is at 3.3 volts. Now let's look at the different components I've added here. This potentiometer is just acting as a simple voltage divider between plus 5, the red line here coming from the rail, and 0, the ground line here going back over to this blue rail. The wiper on the potentiometer slides back and forth across the resistance and lets me pull a 0 to 5 volt value from there that I can use to test my analog uh, reading or for anything else where I need that kind of a value in the circuit. I've also got an LED here. I've attached the uh, negative side of the LED to ground. I've got a little resistor here that allows me to limit the current and it terminates in this line here on nothing, so I'd need to apply a voltage there to get that LED to light or not. Now I've said before that it's a bad idea to combine multiple circuits together because you might have strange effects, but as you can imagine this LED here is connected straight to ground as is this circuit over here connected straight to ground with no resistance, so there shouldn't be any difference between that layout and one that looks like this with the two circuits separated. I just managed to take up a little less real estate if I do it the way I did it. For some of the measurements we're going to make, like with thermocouples and strain gauges, we're going to have really small voltages that we're going to amplify with these instrumentation amplifiers down here. To test them, we're going to need a small voltage value that we can vary predictably by adjusting a potentiometer. Coming from the 3.3 volts here, through this resistor and into the wiper of the potentiometer like this from 3.3 through a resistor to the wiper of the potentiometer and then from the other pin of the potentiometer back out to ground through another resistor out through here allows me to vary this portion of the resistance in here. If I move the wiper all the way over here the resistance between these two pins is going to be zero and the voltage difference between those two pins is going to be zero. If I move it further this way and increase the resistance between them then a larger and larger proportion of the total 3.3 volt difference will show up across those two pins. I've chosen the resistance values on these two resistors to put this voltage value here somewhere more or less in the middle around two and a half volts on the on the absolute voltage scale relative to ground. Down here along the bottom edge of the breadboard I've crammed in a whole lot of stuff in not very much space. I've got a push button here and that push button is connected between ground with this black lead and a pull-up resistor to plus five that's that blue resistor there. So the circuit looks like this. There's the push button, there's the pull-up resistor pulling up to 5 volts. Now if I connect a lead to one of these pins in here it's always going to be either 5 volts if I don't push the button or 0 volts when I do push the button. I've got a photocell here that's going to change resistance depending on how much light is falling on it. I've got it connected to plus 5 and then a resistor in this case a 1k resistor connected back from there to ground. So plus 5 photocell voltage divider and then a resistance back to ground. 
This value here is going to change depending on the relative size of those two resistances. When it's dark, this resistance is going to be large and the voltage will be low. When it gets brighter, this resistance will go down and the voltage will increase towards 5 volts. Here I've combined these four little resistors into a Wheatstone bridge. The layout doesn't look like the traditional diamond shape, but electrically it winds up being the same thing. I've got a resistance connected from 5 volts out to here, another one connected from 5 volts out to here, and then two running from those two points back to ground. So if all these resistors are identical, both of those points are going to be at 2.5 volts, and there'll be zero voltage difference between them. If one of these resistors isn't quite exactly the same as the others, then there'll be a very small voltage difference there. The same kind of thing that we're going to see in the third lab when we look at strain gauge load cells where each of these resistances is a strain gauge. Down at this end of the board I've got two of the INA125 instrumentation amplifiers that we're going to use in labs 2, 3, and 5. I've hooked up this one in ordinary common ground mode and this one with a little extra wiring here is hooked up with a pseudo ground mode so it will vary its output voltage around 2.5 volts whereas this one in the common ground mode will start at 0 volts and as the input signal gets bigger and bigger it'll provide a bigger and bigger output voltage. You can find out more about these amplification circuits by looking at the detailed videos in lab 2 and the, and the other labs on how to hook them up for particular measurements.